Hey guys, what's up? This is the 2018 version of the Mi Cool M8S Pro L review, a $74 TV box with Google Assistant voice control. So if you want to check out the build quality of this device, I recommend you check out my unboxing down in the description below or up here above because I do talk about build quality there as well as the super weird smell that the TV box comes with. And with that being said, let's move on to the software, which is where we really want to spend our time with on the Mi Cool I mean, Pro. And here, this is a 4K TV and I have the resolution here set to 4K at uh, 60 hertz, which actually does have a difference. By switching to 30, it actually is a lot stutterier than this. So with that being said, let's move on to what we have here. A general, you know, moving around Android TV is fairly smooth and I'm using the control over here. So that's pretty smooth, it's, it's pretty good. And I'm fairly impressed with how uh, smooth it is to move around the, the uh, interface, even though it is 4K. Let's check out the Google Play Store for some of you who don't know too much about Android TV. Basically, what you get here is a kind of curated version of Google Play where you cannot install most apps. You can only install apps that have been created for Android TV, which actually doesn't include stuff like Google Chrome or um, even like a calendar or stuff like that, which is, which is fairly annoying. Uh, you don't get a lot of apps. And if you want to get apps, for example, you can get Kodi, which I will install. Um, and if you do want to get apps that are not available on the Play Store, you have to use the Aptoid TV um, ecosystem. And here you can pretty much install pretty much any app you want. Just uh, enable the side loading of APKs and you are good to go. So I have a Plex Media Server set up. So let's go in and see what we got and see whether we can stream from the Media Server over Wi-Fi over here. I don't have any 4K content on that. I do have 4K con uh, content somewhere else, but we can, you know, play around with this for now. So here I was watching Jumanji and let's play that back and see how it works. This is 1080p as well. So you can see here that it plays back very well. And I'm currently on Wi-Fi. I am not um, on a wired connection. So that should be pretty good. You should be able to stream pretty much anything you want as well. So the other cool thing you can do here is you can use the Google Assistant and you can do stuff like pretty much anything you can do on Google Assistant. So let's try that right now. I'm gonna press the Google Assistant button. Hey Google, can you play me a YouTube video? The other cool thing you can do is you can actually just play back whatever file you have in Plex, which is actually pretty cool. Here, watch this. I want to watch Krypton on Plex. All right, opening Plex. Pretty cool, eh? I want to watch Arrow on Plex. Sure, opening Plex. All right, so I want to show you a quick playback of local 4K video content just to see how smooth it is. And here, let's play my Lenovo P2 review. It's so crispy that my uh, sweater on the left is like, like buzzing. You can see the whites just moving around because of how, how clear it is and crisp it is. I love 4K so much. Team Crispy, man, let's, let's do it. I love 4K. Team Crispy, man, let's do it. Let's look at YouTube a little bit. And to be honest, for some reason, I was not able to play back uh, 4K video, even on 4K, which is fairly annoying. So let's play back a, a 4K video and show you what I'm talking about. So take a look at the nerd stats. It says current optimal resolution 2560 by 1440 or 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames a second. But the viewport here is 1920 by 1080, which is very annoying because it really does not play 4K back, which can be annoying. You can also play games like Crossy Road. Unfortunately, this control does not actually work. So if you try doing that, nothing actually works. You have to use a mouse or a controller if you want to control it. So for example, I'm going to use a mouse and now I can move forward. As you can see, it is a tiny bit laggy. I'm not sure why. Um, you can see whenever the guy jumps, it's a little bit laggy. And I think it has something to do with it being 4K. So I think it's because it's 4K. That's why it's a little bit laggy over there. So that can be a little bit annoying. 
um, especially if you want to play a game like this. So here I am playing um, Asphalt 8 Extreme and it actually works. I can use the controller to control it, but the only problem is you can only press one button at a time. So you cannot actually accelerate, which is the middle button and turn at the same time, which is kind of useless. So, but that being said, I can still play and right now I'm playing on the lowest quality. So the resolution here or the frame rate here actually isn't bad, which is actually fairly surprising. I was expecting it to be very bad. Um, especially because it's 4K resolution, but here it's actually pretty decent. So if you want to play games, you, you actually can, um, even on 4K resolution. Of course, you'll have to lower the resolution down if you want to use it, but it's definitely more than playable even at these resolutions. Of course, you, you, you have to get yourself a controller. Um, you really can't use this remote control to play or even, a, I mean, a mouse and keyboard you can, it's just really annoying to play. There are a couple of pieces of bloatware in this. For example, there's DRM info, which I really don't really know what the point of this is, except to unlock movies that uh, you pirated. There's movie player, which I don't like. I use MX player. There's air pin, which is pretty much kind of like a Chromecast. That's not a, that's also kind of not bloatware because that's what you use to set up an IPTV. MX player, I installed that. TV center is basically Kodi. Uh, which is why I didn't install Kodi, but yeah, this is basically Kodi that is pre-installed on here. It's just called TV Center, and it pretty much does everything you want for a Kodi as well. And I installed Terrarium TV as well as official Kodi, but really, there really isn't any difference between TV Center and Kodi over here. All right, so before I end this video, I want to talk about a couple of problems that I had with this. And the first one was I could not get surround sound. So here it says surround sound always, but I could only get a maximum of about 2.1 instead of 5.1 surround sound. So that was actually fairly disappointing. And also multitasking isn't that great, especially when you're multitasking games and YouTube, especially on three gigabytes of RAM. So that is something you have to be aware of if you want to buy this. That being said, this is a pretty good product for $75. And the control also has a Google Assistant button that you can use. And to be honest, it's a pretty good device for all your media needs if you really want to use it. One more downside is you cannot use this controller to control your games, which can be quite annoying because this is more than enough for for you know, playing Crossy Road and Asphalt, but really you can't use it. You need, need a game controller or a mouse and a keyboard, which is very annoying. That being said, this is still a pretty good product for just $75 and I really recommend it. The voice control is pretty good. Of course, you have to talk into this, otherwise you're not gonna get very good responses. And it also has Google Assistant as well. And if you're thinking about buying this, check the link down below. And let me know what you think in the comments down below about the Mi Cool M8S Pro L. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.